There's an extremely common medication group used by millions daily. People take them to sleep well, to reduce allergies, to lessen anxiety. But these pills are silently shrinking the brain. Just one year of daily use, dementia risk increases 50%. And they might be right in your medicine cabinet. Today, we'll talk about this medication group. These are medications you can see everywhere. In family medicine cabinets, on pharmacy shelves, in millions of people's bags. Most people believe these medications are safe. The reason is very simple. They're sold freely, no doctor's prescription needed. If dangerous, they wouldn't allow such widespread sales. That's what everyone thinks. But the latest science shows a completely different truth. These pills are silently blocking a chemical in the brain. This substance is called acetylcholine. It's the most important substance helping the brain communicate with itself. Every day you take these pills, the brain loses a bit more of that ability. Evidence comes from over 1.5 million people followed in studies. This number equals the population of the entire city of Philadelphia. Results are very clear. People using these medications for just three months have 46% higher dementia risk compared to non-users. And here's the most concerning thing. These medications don't just make you temporarily tired. They don't just make you confused for a few hours. They actually change the brain's physical structure, make the brain shrink, make the brain atrophy, and that damage may never recover. In this video, I'll show you exactly which medications are causing this. I'll explain the mechanism of how they destroy the brain. And more importantly, I'll share safe alternatives. These are methods many doctors don't often mention. Methods that can protect the brain while still solving health problems. If you have loved ones using medication to sleep, to reduce allergies, or to lessen anxiety, share this video with them. Too many people are unknowingly destroying their brains without realizing it. Point number one, anticholinergics. The medications we need to be careful about are called by doctors with a scientific name, anticholinergics. Sounds complicated, right? But actually, its meaning is very simple. To understand, think of the brain like a big city. In that city, billions of phone calls happen every second. Brain cells call each other constantly to send messages back and forth. Every action you do needs these calls. Remembering grandchildren's names. Finding keys. Deciding whether to turn on lights or not. So what helps those calls happen? That's a chemical substance called acetylcholine. You can think of it as the brain's telephone system. Without it, the brain cannot communicate with itself. And here's the problem. When you take anticholinergic medication, they block acetylcholine. They prevent calls from happening, like someone is daily cutting thousands more telephone lines in the brain. What happens next? On the first day, you don't notice anything. The city still operates normally. But after a few weeks, after a few months, the situation starts changing. More and more calls can't connect. The brain tries sending signals, but no one hears on the other end. And then you start noticing signs. You stand in the kitchen and wonder what you came in for. You look at an acquaintance's face and it takes a few seconds to remember their name. You tell a story then forget you already told it yesterday. Many people think that's old age, a normal thing, but it's not. That's the brain gradually losing the ability to communicate with itself. Why is this so serious? Because acetylcholine doesn't just help you remember, it helps you focus on work. It helps you move muscles. It helps you learn new things. Without it, you cannot live a normal life. This is why when you use these medications long-term, consequences are very serious. Like throwing a wrench into the brain's communication system. Signals get weaker and weaker, eventually leading to memory loss and dementia. Now for the most important part. Anticholinergic medications aren't rare or special types. They're in many medications you use daily. So, check your medicine cabinet right now. I'll list each type, and I bet you'll find at least one or two types. The first type is Benadryl, the most common allergy medication. If you feel itchy or have a rash, you take one pill. But each Benadryl pill is blocking acetylcholine in the brain. Next are over-the-counter sleep medications, like Tylenol PM or Unisom. You think you're taking medication to help sleep well, but actually, you're taking brain blockers to force drowsiness. If you're using anxiety medication, check the name. Hydroxazine is one type, also called Vistaril or Atarax. This is also anticholinergic. 
Many elderly people use bladder control medication. Detropan is one type, Detrol is another. These are all in the anticholinergic group. If you have irritable bowel syndrome and are prescribed Bentol, this is also one in this group. Even scopolamine motion sickness patches are in this group. And here's what you need to understand. Some are prescription medications. You need a doctor's prescription to buy. But many types you can buy freely without asking anyone. You just pick up and pay. But all have the same dangerous effect. They block the brain's communication system. And here's what many don't know. You might be using multiple types simultaneously without realizing. One hydroxyzine pill for morning anxiety, one Benadryl pill to sleep at night, one detropin pill for the bladder. Each type individually blocks a bit of acetylcholine. But combined, you're turning off large parts of your brain. Before I share scientific evidence, I want to ask where are you watching this video from? Comment your city or country name so I can send greetings and thanks to you because your support is a huge motivation for us to continue creating health knowledge, sharing videos for everyone. Now you know which medications are dangerous. But you might be thinking whether it's really that serious. Let science answer. I don't want you to just believe my words. I want you to see evidence from the largest studies ever conducted. What did the first study do? Scientists followed over 1.5 million people, a number equivalent to the population of the entire city of Philadelphia. They followed for many years to see who used anticholinergic medications and who developed dementia. Results are very clear. Anticholinergic medication use is an independent risk factor. What does this mean? It means even if you do everything right, risk still increases. You eat healthily, exercise regularly, and don't smoke. But if you take these medications, Dementia risk is still higher, and the more you use, the higher the risk. But here's the truly scary number. Another study examined 21 independent studies. Not one or two, but 21 different studies. And all point to the same thing. If you use anticholinergic medication for just three months, dementia risk increases 46%. Not three years or one year, but just three months. So what does 46% increased risk mean? To help you understand better, see this example. Suppose you originally have 10% risk of developing dementia. Now that risk increases to nearly 15%. Sounds like a small number, right? But when applied to millions of people using these medications, that's hundreds of thousands of preventable dementia cases. And this final study is even more concerning. It comes from one of America's most prestigious medical journals, JAMA Neurology. They didn't just ask people whether they have dementia, but they did more. They actually took brain pictures. They used brain imaging to see what the brains of people using anticholinergic medications look like. And the results amazed scientists. These people's brains are smaller, more atrophied, like a fresh grape gradually drying into a raisin. And their brains don't function properly. Energy metabolism decreases. Important areas for memory are damaged. This isn't just about temporary tiredness or confusion. These medications are actually changing the brain's physical structure. They make the brain shrink, and once the brain has atrophied, it may never recover to original size. If you're still watching and find this information important, type number three below. This lets me know this content is meaningful to you. Each comment is motivation for us to continue creating useful content. Now you've seen the evidence. But understanding the mechanism will help you understand why they're so dangerous. Let's see what's happening in the brain. To understand the mechanism, you need to know one simple thing. In the brain, acetylcholine needs to attach to something to work. That's called a receptor. You can think of it as an electrical outlet. Acetylcholine is the plug. The receptor is the outlet. When the plug goes into the outlet, what happens? Electricity flows. Lights turn on. The brain works. Simple as that. The receptor type acetylcholine attaches to is called muscarinic receptor. The name sounds complicated, but you just need to remember one thing. These are the brain's electrical outlets. And here's the interesting thing. These outlets aren't just in the brain, but throughout the body, in the heart, in the lungs, in the intestines. That's why these medications have many different effects. They're used to reduce nausea, to reduce intestinal spasms, to control overactive bladder. But in the brain, these medications cause serious problems. They block communication in extremely important areas. There's an area called the hippocampus. You can think of it as the brain's library. 
where all memories are stored. And there's the cerebral cortex. This is where you think, where you make decisions, where you solve problems. So when medication blocks acetylcholine in these areas, what happens? Like someone is locking the library doors, turning off your workspace lights. Short term, you'll see these signs, foggy mind, like viewing life through a mist layer. Confusion, you step into a room and forget what you were going to do. Slow reactions, someone calls your name and it takes a few seconds to recognize. But if you continue using these medications, the situation becomes much worse. Month after month, year after year, damage becomes permanent. The brain starts atrophying. And once the brain has atrophied, it cannot recover. And here's why elderly people are especially vulnerable. As we age, what happens? The body naturally produces less acetylcholine, like a phone battery gradually weakening over time. So if you take medication that further reduces acetylcholine, what happens? Like pulling the battery from a phone that's already almost dead. You're accelerating the decline process that's already naturally occurring. Basically, you're cutting off one of the brain's main communication lines. On the first day, a few calls get disconnected. Next week, hundreds of calls get disconnected. Next month, thousands of calls can't connect. And the longer it continues, the more the brain loses the ability to function normally. Now you understand the mechanism. But the most important question is what you must do. This is exactly the part I promised you from the video's beginning. First, I need to clarify one important thing. I'm not saying these medications should never be used. There are situations they're truly necessary. What kind of examples? Taking one Benadryl pill for one or two nights when you truly can't sleep. Although this isn't ideal, it's probably okay. Or when you have a severe allergic reaction, Benadryl can save lives. Sometimes you truly need these medications for urinary incontinence or severe irritable bowel syndrome. But what we want to avoid is what? Is using these medications every day, month after month, year after year. That's when damage truly starts accumulating. And this is especially important if you belong to one of the high-risk groups. If you're over 60, the brain already naturally produces less acetylcholine. Adding medication is like pouring oil on fire. If you've already started noticing memory isn't as good as before, be vigilant. You forget keys, forget names, forget appointments. These are signs the brain is struggling. Don't make the situation worse. And if you're using more than one anticholinergic medication simultaneously, this is a very dangerous situation. I see this very frequently. Someone uses hydroxyzine for morning anxiety, then takes Benadryl to sleep at night, and is also using Ditropan for the bladder. Each type individually blocks a bit of acetylcholine, but combined, you're turning off large parts of the brain. So what must you do? The first step is very simple. Go to the medicine cabinet right now. Take out all medications, both prescription and over-the-counter. For each type, search on Google or ask pharmacists which ones are anticholinergic. List them all out. The second step is extremely important. Don't stop any medication on your own or change dosage. The reason is because if you suddenly stop some medications, this can be dangerous for your body. Therefore, you must consult your doctor first. The third step is to schedule a doctor's appointment. Bring along the list of anticholinergic medications you're using. Ask whether there are safer alternatives, especially if this is medication you need long-term. Now I'll share specific alternatives. If you're using Benadryl or Unisom to sleep, there are many more natural options. Melatonin helps regulate the natural sleep cycle. Ashwagandha helps reduce stress and improve sleep. Chamomile tea is soothing and safe. Magnesium is also very good, but must use the right form for sleep. If you need prescription medication, trazodone is a good choice. It has minimal or no anticholinergic effects and is very helpful for sleep. If you have allergies, don't use Benadryl anymore. Switch to second-generation antihistamines like Zyrtec, Claritin, or Allegra. These have one important characteristic. They don't penetrate the brain much. They work mainly in the body, not affecting the central nervous system as much as Benadryl. If you're using bladder control medication like oxybutynin, ditropan, detrol, or vesicare, ask your doctor about Merbitrec. It works by a completely different mechanism, not anticholinergic. It still helps control bladder but doesn't block acetylcholine in the brain. If you're prescribed Bentol for IBS, discuss with your doctor about peppermint oil. 
Research shows it can be very effective and completely natural. There are also other prescription medications depending on your IBS type. If you've used these medications for many years, don't panic. The brain has amazing recovery ability if you start caring for it properly right now. The solution is you sleep enough regularly, seven to eight hours each night. Exercising regularly, even walking 30 minutes daily, helps a lot. Reverse other risk factors like controlling blood sugar if you have diabetes, controlling blood pressure, caring for cardiovascular health. So we've gone through all the important information. From understanding which medications are dangerous, to the mechanism they destroy the brain, to safe alternatives. But here's what I want you to remember most. The brain is the most precious organ in the body. It stores all your precious memories. Wedding day, grandchildren's laughter, loved ones' faces, everything is in there. And every day you take unnecessary anticholinergic medications, you're gambling with those memories. You're increasing the risk that one day you'll look at grandchildren's faces and not remember their names. But the good news is you have the power to change this. You don't have to accept the current situation. You can discuss with your doctor, can find alternatives, and can protect your brain. So don't wait. Today, right after watching this video, go check the medicine cabinet. Today, schedule a doctor's appointment, because your brain deserves to be protected. And now I want to hear from you. What in this video made you think again? Share in the comments section. What you share can help others recognize the problem and act in time. If this information could help someone you care about, share this video with them. Hit the like button to help others find this important information. And subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss the upcoming Brain Health Optimization Series. Stay healthy and see you in the next video.